there are other ways and and the rodeo itself is so wholesome like there's families it's outside it's not like about numbing the pain of being queer it's about like celebrating it and um, in a very just uh, beautiful way Hi, my name is Peter Kinnett and I'm here with Luke Guilford, the director of the new film National Anthem. I came out of this really beautiful film, your beautiful film, National Anthem, really fascinated by queer rodeo culture. I'm also given a lot of hope by it. First, I just want to know, how did you first sort of become aware of it? So I actually grew up in Colorado. My dad was in the Professional Rodeo Cowboys Association. Oh. So I, all my earliest memories are at the rodeo with my family. And I love Western culture. Like, all those rodeos were so fun as a kid. You know, the sunsets and adrenaline and animals and rhinestones, hairspray. Like, it's an amazing environment to be in as a kid. But as I grew older, I just learned how homophobic mainstream rodeos are. And so I kind of stayed away from that world. But part of me really missed being in those spaces. And so in 2016, I was at a Pride event in Northern California. And I saw some queer cowboys there. And because I've grown up in that world, I knew it was like not the village people just like dressed up yeah. as cowboys. They were really authentic cowboys. And um, we started a conversation. They were so warm and so welcoming. You know, a lot of the folks, you know, have similar stories where they grew up in rural places or grew up going to the mainstream rodeo and felt the need to kind of create their own safe spaces. So they invited me. And just immediately I felt like family. It was just like this electric charge of belonging. And so I built kind of trust slowly within the community and started photographing a lot of the folks within the, the queer rodeo community. And it just started really organically like that. Yeah, so like for seven or eight years now, you've been documenting yeah. this this world. Yeah. Um, do you want to get into a little bit about that pursuit and what it's sort of culminated in, in addition to obviously to this film? Well, so first it was a book called National Anthem, which came out in 2020. But while I was making the book, I, I felt like the photos were just kind of scratching on the surface. And I was finding so much kind of commonality between myself and a lot of the people I was meeting. And as I was becoming friends with them and taking their pictures and all that, I was hearing so many of their stories. And so kind of just started putting that into a script and wanted this script, though, to include a lot of the people from the real community and to sort of be blending my story with their stories. And so it grew in that way where I started writing in like 2018 and it took me a while to come up with something that I felt excited about and started sharing it in like 2021. And then, yeah, we were shooting in early 22. One of the many things that I really love about it is how devoid it feels of cliches. Like there's a lot of things in it, an alcoholic mother, uh, a relationship between a trans girl and a cis man, sort of a kid in danger, all these mm -hmm. things, and you think it's going to go one way and then it doesn't. Is that something you were sort of thinking about as you were scripting it and putting it together? Because it feels just like, you know, something that you've never really seen before in many ways. Thank you. Yeah, no. I appreciate that. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Very intentional. I myself, I think, am so sick of seeing stories like that, that, you know, yeah. these cliches exist for a reason, but I don't think we need to see that on screen all the time. You know, I think so much of being a queer person in the world is about survival and resilience and and also danger and trauma and all of that so it's like why do we need to see that on screen all the time yeah. like yes that exists but that doesn't mean like there's so much joy and beauty in the queer community too and i just i really wanted to celebrate that i think we need that now more than ever to be giving us hope and um, reminding ourselves that these safe spaces have, and you know, queer people in general have existed since the dawn of time, and we've been creating safe spaces since the dawn of time. So there's something just so beautiful and hopeful about that, and I wanted to kind of shine a light on that and put something just joyful out there. Yeah, and it, it, it is that. It also, though, I did find it interesting in that it did get into sort of like how these chosen families, these communities, there, there can be some conditions to that. Like there, there was some friction in this film in terms yeah. of just sort of joining these communities. What were you sort of trying to say about just queer community as an idea? It is still a microcosm of the real world. And real life, there's all kinds of, you know, power struggles and dramas. And I wanted the, the sources of tension and drama to be just very human and more universal too of like the 
pain of a first heartbreak, the complications that happen in, in open relationships. Also, like, in these places, like, the forces of nature, too, the, you know, the storm that happens and the animals and the horse and all that, like, these are a little bit more specific to this community and I want to bring some of that in too that it's just I haven't really seen that being some of the engines of storytelling very often so I wanted to share that because it was very natural and real for this world. I also feel like there's just such a warmth to the community despite what I just said. Um, <laughs> uh, a warmth to the community depicted in the film and I think there is sort of this urban versus rural thing where I, I do find urban queer communities sometimes can be a little chilly, at least from the outside, whereas this was so, like, the community in this film is so warm from the get-go. What are your experiences with sort of urban versus rural and were you putting that into this? Like, mm -hmm. when you first discovered this community, for example, I'm assuming you had spent a lot of time in urban queer communities. Like, did you feel a difference just from documenting them? Oh, yeah. I mean, and I was just pulled, that's why I think I kept going back at the time. In 2016, I lived in New York, and so I was very, like, that. there's not much more urban than, than yeah. you get, so, um, and I, I, you know, love so many of my friends there, and I love urban queer spaces, and those are so important, but it did feel like such a stark contrast, in a way, when I was going down to New Mexico and Texas and Colorado and places like that that are so warm, and a lot of the value system is just so different. I mean, I think in urban spaces, it's so much more about status, you know, what you look like, how much money you make, what can you do for me kind of thing. And in these spaces, none of that was a factor. It was just like, if you show up your family, doesn't matter what you look like, doesn't matter you know, who you love, what you do, none of that. Like, no one asked me any of those questions. No one asked me for like my social media either. Or, like, it wasn't about these things that are a bit more superficial. So that to me was just a really beautiful reminder that, you know, there are other ways and and the rodeo itself is so wholesome like there's families it's outside it's not like about numbing the pain of being queer it's about like celebrating it and um, in a very just uh, beautiful way. Yeah, there's I mean, I feel like there's a lot of things queer people can learn from this film um, and sort of the community that it depicts. So I really am excited for it to get out there into the world, as I'm sure you are. <laughs> Thank you. The title of both the movie and the, the book project that sort of preceded it is National Anthem. Do you want to talk a little bit about what you intended by that title? So when I started the project, it was 2016. That was when Trump was president in the United States. and. I think everywhere though, it's not just the United States, there's so much kind of division happening and polarization, at least, you know, politically, and so much conversation about like red versus blue states, Republican versus Democrat, coastal elite versus middle America, like there's so much kind of us versus them attitudes. And, but then this idea of America is that, you know, land of the free and, you know, be whoever you want to be. It felt like such a myth, you know, and, and something that was just so far from the truth of what uh, had really, what was happening, and especially for queer people who are so exclude and trans person of color or queer, you know. So it was just so beautiful to me to see this community that embraces uh, this end of the spectrum of cowboy culture, which is so kind of like the myth of America, um, but then it also are queer and openly proud. And so to me, that's just so beautiful and poignant as this idea of what America really should be. Was there a specific part of this process that really stands out as just giving you so much joy when you sort of discovered it or, or went through it? We book ended the shoot with actual rodeos. Oh. The very first day, um, Charlie, who plays Dylan, was at the rodeo and actually got on a bowl and um, was, you know, becoming friends with all the drag queens in the community. And that was just brought me so much joy to see like this this dream I had of this character. But he so was embodying Dylan and just it was such a pure experience for him to to become part of this community and the way that they welcomed him the way so warmly the way i had been welcomed originally so that brought a lot of joy to just see it kind of come together so it felt almost effortlessly after like pouring so much work into making this thing happen and then it was like we were there and he just fit right in 
And so that was really beautiful. But then to be able to kind of return to the rodeo at the end after everything we'd kind of been through with like the um, principal photography of, of the movie. But then we had the whole rest of the cast before it was just Charlie. And now it was the whole cast was at the rodeo. And that was such a beautiful moment too, to kind of share it with everyone. And the rodeo is kind of the heart and soul of the movie too. So it was such a nice kind of reminder of why we were doing this whole thing in the first place. Yeah, and I mean, we've alluded to it many times, but obviously this is a very scary time to be queer mm -hmm. in lots of places, but America, particularly if you're trans, particularly in the South. So this film obviously resonates in many ways just simply because of that. As an artist, as a queer artist working in the States right now, is there anything or what from this community have you learn sort of motivates you to sort of go forward and have sort of hope and, and continue to, to do work that obviously like, you know, um, sheds light on the, the wonderful parts about uh, the queer community in the South. There's no choice. I mean, it's, we just have to keep fighting in whatever way we can. And to me, this was just something that I hadn't seen and that I wanted, I felt like needed to be shared. And we're about to enter another election cycle. And like, you know, thing, it's a scary time. And I think that we have to just do what we can to, to you know, keep fighting for, for our community and for our people. Well, I think a lot of people are going to feel that walking out of this film, So, and I did, so thank you so much for, for making it, and I'm so excited for everyone to see it. So thanks so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me.